There's a handful of useful commands in the Materials Editor that should, if possible, be utilized during your normal workflow. Some of these features being a little less known about than others. Now to demonstrate how they work, I'm going to be using a file named Material Editor Tools. Let's begin by applying the material at the upper left hand side of the Materials Editor to the object in our scene. And we'll do that with a simple drag and drop. Once done, we can verify the material has indeed hit its spot because of the triangles that we see around the sample slot. OK, if we wanted to see the black and red design of our material in the shaded view, we can drop down to the lower row of icons, clicking on the Show Map and Viewport command. Over on the right hand side icons, fourth one down, we have a handy option that allows us the opportunity to quickly compare various tiling sizes. It's called Sample UV Tiling. Now if we hold the button down, we can experiment with a couple different tiling sizes. Now, important to know, the difference in the way the pattern displays only affects the visual representation we see in the Material Editor. This option does not affect the actual tiling of the map on the object's rendered surface. If we wanted to do that, we'd need to adjust the tiling value directly on the map itself. Why don't we render our scene real quick to verify the fact that tiling indeed is unchanged. Staying on the right-hand side icons, we also have a backlight option. Turning it off and on gives us a better idea of what a glancing specular highlight would look like if the lighting in our scene was hitting our objects from an angle. Now, directly below that, if we're building a skin with some level of transparency, we can activate the checkered background. This many times will offer us a little better look at the areas of an object that'll be transparent. Let's now apply the brick material that we see directly to the one we've been working on. A little further down in the icons on the right, we have the Material Map Navigator. This provides a quick and easy way to navigate through the various maps that we built into a material. Now you'll notice that if we click on a specific entry, it'll jump immediately to that map channel in the Materials Editor. So here's the map we have on the Diffuse Color, here's a Noise Map we have on the Specular, and another map we have on Glossiness. We can verify that back in the Editor. Here it reads Glossiness, there's our bitmap, and there's the name down at the bottom. Now, back on the bottom row of icons, we have a command that allows us to break any relationship we might have instanced into a material. For example, if we use the same map in both the diffuse and bump channels, having instanced that when copying, clicking on the Make Unique button while at the map level will remove that map-to-map -map relationship. Let's do this. We'll take that brick material in the middle, copying it straight down. Now, down in the map sections, let's copy our diffuse color map down to the bump channel. And when we get it there, we'll go ahead and say Instance. This creates a relationship where if we were to change one of the settings on one of the referenced maps, the other map would change also. Let's do this. We'll take the bump amount to 111. Now let's double click on the sample slot, which will open a larger resizable viewing window. Now back in the editor, we'll jump up on the bump branch, changing the tiling of the bump map to 2 and 2. Now as we do that, because the map was instanced, you notice it also affects the map in the diffuse channel. Let's take our tiling settings back to 1 and 1. Now we'll go back to that horizontal row of icons below the sample slots. Heading right for the middle, looking for Make Unique. Let's go ahead now and click. Now that'll break the relationship. Now watch what happens this time when we change the bump maps tiling to 2 and 2. You see, this time around, without having that memory of instancing back to the diffuse map, it's only changing the bump tile. Okay, let's go ahead and close the large window. Now, if we select the material in the upper right-hand corner of the editor, I want you to notice its name. It's called Stone. If we now go back and check the name of the middle material, you'll see that's named Stone also. Now, if we again select the material in the upper right and apply it to the scene, watch what happens. Because the existing brick material is also named Stone, we're getting a warning message up having duplicate names. Now, if you want, you could always make a selection between one of the two options in the box, but here's a better way to go about it. We'll cancel that out. This time, we're looking for a command that'll replace that material, same name, without giving us that warning message. We'll find that on the lower row icons, second in from the left. It's called Put Material to Scene. Now check that out. It's made the replacement, yet no warning message has popped up. So as long as the name of the material is already in the scene, the command will automatically assign the new material without having the material already exist warning coming up. Now to the right of that, we also have a command called put to library. This will save the existing material directly to the currently active material library. Now if you're unfamiliar with material libraries, we'll be looking at what they are and how they work in a later chapter in the title.
Lastly, being limited to only 24 sample slots in the editor, you'll from time to time find yourself needing to clear a ball or two off in order to build a few new skins. Now if that's the case, you can click on the Reset Map Material to Default Settings icon. Now the options give you a chance to clear things off either only in the Materials Editor or in both the editor and in the scene. So that'll get you set up with a handful of helpful tools that sometimes get overlooked.